Components of an argumentative essay. How to distinguish an arguable topic. The topic needs to be debatable. You want to select a topic that has two clear sides or positions. The topic should not be too broad, so once you have your topic, you should decide specifically what exactly you will be discussing. Think of three specific reasons or ideas that you will argue for. These will be your main points and will help outline your body paragraphs. So you want to make sure that those are very strong and you can expand on them well. Make sure it's something that interests you because if you're passionate about the topic, it'll make the whole paper go a lot more smoother. So let's say I want my topic to be space exploration. First, I'd ask myself, is this a debatable topic? Yes, because it is likely to cause public disagreement. Is it broad? Yes. We don't want it to be broad, so how can I fix that? How can I narrow it down? So, what exactly do I want to talk about concerning exploration? Funding space explorations. I do care enough about it to do enough research to give me a good knowledge of it. So, instead of just doing space exploration, which is a wide, wide topic that can cover a lot of things, I narrowed it down to simply funding space exploration. So either do I fund it? Do I think funding is good? And if so, that helped narrow my, down my topic. So now that I have my topic and we've narrowed it down, we need to take a stance. So we need to be sure to have a good knowledge of the different viewpoints involved in, your to in my topic. So for example, concerning fund funding space explorations, we need to have an understanding of the population that is against funding as well as the population who's for it. So you need to make sure that you do your research and you see why people are against it and why they aren't. You want to make sure that you have a very clear understanding of both sides of the topic to enrich your argument. After you feel comfortable with each perspective of the topic, Pick the stance you feel you can argue most effectively. Sometimes this means picking a side that you don't agree with, but that's okay because if it forms the strongest argument, then it's going to be the best paper. Then you form an argument that is sequenced by the priority of facts and the level of importance. So, so based on the level of importance of all your facts and how strong they are, you want to order them in a way that really helps strengthen your argument. I would recommend starting with the strongest argument you have and then going down the line into ones that maybe some people would find disagreeable. Next, you need to structure your introduction paragraph. So this should include several things. It should include an attention grabber, provide background information, on your topic and introduce your topic and explain your point of views to the reader by highlighting the importance of the topic or the reason readers should care. And it should include a strong thesis that highlights at least two or that highlights at least two to three main points. Okay, so for your attention grabber, that could be anything from a fact or a quote that relates to your topic and preferably it'd be something that is for your side of the argument. And with background information, that leeways into the next slide, which is what to include in the background information. So you want to make sure you include enough information, but don't bring in too much of the complicated aspects that it could be confusing to the reader. So it is a very crucial step because without understanding the background, your reader can understand your paper. So you should have the five W's and your H. So the who, what, when, where, why, and how. Let's go back to our topic of funding space exploration. So my what would be, what is space exploration? Why do we need to fund space exploration? When did funding space exploration become controversial? Where will the funding go to? Who will be funding space exploration? How will the funding for space exploration come to be? You would then answer those questions and that would help structure your background information. And now it's time for your body paragraphs. So when looking at your body paragraphs, they need to have three main things, 
claim, evidence, and reasoning. One way I've heard it done is assertion, evidence, commentary. So you assert your claim, you provide evidence to support your claim, and then you comment on that evidence or pretty much you back it up and connect it back to your claim. How to make claims. What is your position? This involves a statement related to your thesis. It will be a main point to the argument. Each paragraph will have a different claim, but, but connects to the same argument. It is followed up by your evidence. Here's our example thesis. Uh, to be considered a living organism, there are criteria that must be met. Organized structure, requiring energy, adaptation, reproduction, growth, movement, metabolism, and death. Because viruses do not meet all the criteria to consider it to be a living organism, they are not alive. So, one an example of a claim would be viruses are unable to metabolize on their own, therefore making them a non-living organism. So there's our claim. Now we move on to providing evidence. So, your evidence backs up your claim, gives the reader information to further your argument, use outside sources, and followed up by your reasoning. So an example of our evidence going with the example that we started for claim would be according to Arizona State University in their webpage, Viral Tech, they mentioned that viruses are too small and simple to, col to collect or use their own en energy. They just steal it from cells they infect. And that goes along with our claim where we said that viruses are not alive because we said they did not meet the criteria one such criteria, they make their own energy. Reasoning is important because it explains and breaks down your evidence. It connects your reason to your thesis and it tells the reader why your evidence is vital for your claim. I would argue this is the most important point of any body paragraph because you have your claim, you provided your evidence, and now you're going to use that evidence to strengthen your argument. So here's our example. Because viruses steal energy from other cells, they are unable to metabolize anything to convert into energy. In order to be considered living, having a, me having a metabolism is essential for survival of a living organism. Without a metabolism, there is no source of energy. With no source of energy, there is no st stability to survive. Therefore, viruses are not alive. As you can see, that ropes in your claim and it ropes in your evidence and it will help solidify your argument. One thing to be wary of are logical fallacies. These are arguments or irrelevant points that lack any evidence to support the claims they are making. You can avoid these by making sure your evidence is supported. So make sure you use reliable sources for your evidence and fact check the evidence. So if the same fact appears on multiple sources, it is most likely reliable. So. Some common fallacies that people run into are slippery slope, so a course of action is rejected because with little or no evidence, one insists that it will lead to a chain reaction resulting in an undesirable end or ends. Hasty generalization is another one where the conclusion that is reached is not logically justified by sufficient or unbiased evidence. And the red herring, an irrelevant topic or point is introduced to divert the argument from the original issue. So, when writing an argumentative or persuasive paper, are multiple views necessary? The answer is yes. So, you want to make sure that you provide a strong argument for your side, but you don't want to appear biased. So, you want to include the other perspective that it exists. Parts of unbiased research is to acknowledge other points of view. The goal of an argumentative essay is not only to acknowledge another point of view, but use your argument to convince the reader and prove that your point is better. What you're doing here is pretty much, you will introduce the other side of the argument, you will say a little bit about it, like this is why some people think that this is right, but then you wanna go back on it or, re or rebut it by saying, but this is wrong, and then go back into your argument and provide facts that contradict that provided by the opposing side. This is what's known as the concession paragraph. It is really only found in argumentative papers and it's placed close to the end of the essay before the conclusion. So the typical format for this paragraph is introduce the opposing argument or point of view, 
acknowledge parts of the opposition that are valid, and counter their argument. And that's probably the key point right there. Counter their argument. Don't just let their argument sit there because while you want to include valid points, you want to, you know, give the opposition some credit, say, yes, they did do a good job, but this is why my side is better. And also, this will help introduce your conclusion. So, the conclusion paragraph wraps up your argument and reintroduces the, the thesis, reminding the reader of your topping and making clear why your argument is valid. So, you want to restate your main argument, present one or two general sentences which, you know, summarize your arguments and support your main claims, and then provide a general warning of the consequences of not following the premise that you put forward and or a general statement of the benefit from following that premise. I've often heard this as the call to action point. So you want to make it clear that the reader has a responsibility after reading your paper to take action in line with your argument. So that is an argumentative paper.